Well guys, we traveled all this way and we finally made it. Tin Man, Scarecrow, Cowardly Lion. Most importantly of all, we couldn't have done it without my dog, Toto. Has anyone seen Toto, actually? Cowardly Lion, what have you done? Wait, before you get mad, let's look on the bright side. At least I got that heart Tin Man wanted. <sighs> Any chance you saved that brain? Hello and welcome to my corner of the internet. I don't know how you got here, but you're not leaving. Not without a fight. You guys ever watch VeggieTales as a kid? I remember seeing this the few times I went to church, and for some reason, Chuck E. Cheese. I didn't realize this, but VeggieTales is kind of like the religious Tom and Jerry. As in, they pretty much made their own version of a lot of really popular movies. I didn't know they actually did this until I went to a garage sale and saw this for sale at the garage. Veggie Tales, the wonderful Wizard of Haas. We're already not off to a great start. I'm guessing this movie isn't very funny, so they felt the need to tell people right from the very beginning what they should be expecting from it. It says here, a lesson in forgiveness. You made me wear a dress, Veggie Tales. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that, no matter how hot I looked. Just looking at the cover, I have a lot of questions. Why does the lion look like the love child between Elvis Presley and Albert Einstein? And the Tin Man might not have a heart, but he definitely has a cucumber, if you know what I'm saying. At first I thought this was a scarecrow, but apparently according to the back, this is Dorothy. For some reason they changed Dorothy into Darren because, ha ha. And for some reason this is the scarecrow, which just, just look at him, you cannot tell me. This isn't a racial stereotype. A lesson in forgiveness, more like a lesson in how to be racist. I don't want to make fun of the movie anymore. Let's just watch it. Said no one ever. It's time for the theme song. Uh, yeah, Bob. What do I do? Hmm, let's see. I know, you play the guitar. Bob, I don't have any hands. Oh, you're right. Well, okay, well, you play this. <laughs> So our story begins with our main character, Darby, searching for his father on their dental floss field. It's like if they made Willy Wonka, but they made Willy Wonka's dad the main character instead. We find out that there's a new amusement park called the Land of Haas, and Darby is very excited. They have this roller coaster that goes upside down, and even one of those bouncy castles where you jump around and you knock your heads together till you pass out! To get a concussion. Unfortunately for Darby, his dad says that they don't have the money to go, causing Darby to run off saying he's done with the farm. I gotta tell ya, I don't know who we're supposed to be rooting for. Are we supposed to be cheering on Darby? Because at this point, I'm cheering for the tornado. You don't like your farm? Well, <sighs> there, now you have no income. Enjoy starving to death, you spoiled little brat. Oh, and in case you were scared, there wouldn't be any songs. How can I be lucky if I'm missing out on all the fun? You jinxed us. Now we both have to suffer. Life should be a party, but the hot dog's falling from my bun. Call up Larry the Cucumber. I'm sure he's got a hot dog to put in between your buns. Then Mary Poppins just kind of pops in out of nowhere. Wait a minute. She's got a mole. Maybe she's not Mary Poppins. Maybe she's Nanny McPhee. In which case, Darby won't be a spoiled kid for very much longer. I just realized I'm calling this kid spoiled, and he's a vegetable. There's a joke to be made there somewhere. She flies away, probably making friends with the jet engine, when we get to meet Bobby, the bully of the show. How is Darby so far away from the land of Haas, but he's close enough for this Bobby guy to just ride to his house on a scooter? And he gets to the farm pretty quickly, I'm assuming. Unless he left his house at like 4 o'clock in the morning just to get to the farm before it got dark. Huh. Take that, loser. I told you your dad didn't love you and you wished you were throwing the vegetable steamer. Hey, you think your dad can give me a ride home? It took me 10 hours to get here and it's getting dark out. Oh, and instead of Toto, this is Tutu. Get wise, get some money, and go have some fun. Sounds like a John Mulaney line. This causes Darby to sneak out of the farm with his entire college fund, which is just all the money in this piggy bank. So I'm guessing Harvard was never on the table? While him and Tutu are walking, the storm keeps getting more and more aggressive until a tornado appears like 10 feet away from them. Yay! 
my favorite character so far. They take shelter in this abandoned trailer, which is apparently just outside their farm, I guess. And I am getting more and more convinced that Darby's dad is just very bad at directions. The land of Haas is only five miles away. Well, that's at least a 10 day trip. I'm sorry, Darby, but we just can't do it this year. But Bobby can ride his scooter there in like an hour. No, I'm sorry, Darby, it's just too far away. Hey, why don't you check out that mile high cloud I've been hearing about? It's only a mile away. Could be fun. They get sucked into a tornado when they crash land in a brand new world with monster trucks and everyone is French. So I guess he's in Canada? We meet our fairy who tells us that Darby's in Munchie Land. Dude, you wanna go to Munchie Land? I think we're already there. Nice. Kinda weird to call it Munchie Land when everyone that lives there is a piece of food. That's like calling a town, we cook our kids. Population 790 and falling. The Munchies sing a song about how Darby saved their lives, but then we meet our true villain of Munchie Land, stoners. I, I mean, Bobby. Darby explains that he's trying to get to the land of Haas, and the fairy tells him he needs to talk to Yellow the Toad, an old man who will lead him there. Oh, so instead of the yellow brick road, they'll say, who's probably the slowest thing since dial-up. Everyone's a vegan until they have to watch this frog walk for 10 minutes straight. So they walk down the road when they meet racial stereotype number one, the scarecrow. I don't know how I feel about this. Because clearly this movie is trying to teach kids to be honest and appreciate what they have and make fun of people who are different. Now that's what I call the American dream. Not even a minute after freeing the scarecrow, we run into our second character, every woman's fantasy, the Tin Man, who is also on the search for the Land of Haas, which the Tin Man doesn't have money for. He could probably just scrap himself and pay for the ticket, I would imagine. So Darby offers to pay for all three of them to go. This kid is really overestimating how much confidence his dad had in him going to college. They somehow lose the toad and have to figure out where it might have gone when out of the blue. A friend of mine was in these woods and he says he saw a fella from Toledo. You mean an Ohioan? This movie really doesn't like people from Ohio. Eh, fair enough. They run into the lion who tells them he's bored. In fact, he's too bored to even eat them. Aw, oh, man. They invite the bored lion to go with them and they continue on their merry way. Oh. Turns out they're being spied on by our buddy Bobby, who decides to meet them at the Land of Haas. Here's a fun game. Take a shot every time I said the Land of Haas in this video. I don't think you understood what I meant. Anyways, they get to the Land of Haas. Will you stop? And they miraculously have enough money for everyone. That's one thing that's really weird about this whole movie. Like they have these random shots of the pig looking really concerned whenever Darby offers to pay for somebody, but it doesn't end up mattering because he has enough money for everyone anyway. So like, what was the point? They go crazy and they party and then Party Master Martin over here says that there's another park filled with even more awesomeness. When it turns out that Darby needs to pay even more money to unlock more parks. Yeah, pretty much. They all decide to go home, causing Darby to remember his dad and his weird obsession with floss. Darby goes on this huge rampage when the wizard tells him he has to pay for goods and services. Darby threatens to go on Yelp and ruin the business, causing the owner to lock him in the dungeon. We're almost towards the end of the movie, and I still don't think I'm on Darby's side. He's just a brat the entire time. Each time he doesn't get what he wants, he just screams and runs away. Like, like kids, shut up for five minutes. Luckily, before Party Master Martin can get a little too freaky, Darby's friends come to rescue him. They manage to escape when they're cornered by Bobby, who turns out is actually named Chester. Why are we 40 minutes into a 50 minute movie? And we're just now learning this guy's name? Chester's parents show up and take him home and the fairy appears giving Darby back his RV and launching him back to Kansas. That's another weird thing about this movie. Apparently this whole Munchie Land thing isn't another world. Like you know how in The Wizard of Oz it turns out that Dorothy just got like knocked out from the tornado or something? Like that's what teleported her to the wonderful place of yellow bricks and weird fairies. That's not a part of this movie. Apparently this whole like strange town, whole totally different looking world is right down the street from Darby basically. Imagine if you walked out of your house, walked down the street and all of a sudden you're in Skyrim. Darby gets home and instead of his dad being mad that he spent his life savings, he decides to throw a party. So you see kids, if you run away and steal from your parents, you'll get rewarded too. Oh, what if you're racist too? <gasps> Good job! That's extra nachos for you, Nathan! Well guys, that was The Wizard of Haas. Huh. No one got shot. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. Speaking of surprises, 
This movie's actually pretty good. I think the message was way off and the characters were really annoying, but some of the jokes were actually pretty funny. Do I think you should watch this movie? Yes? No? Maybe. Look, all I'm gonna say is if you do end up watching this movie, prepare to be surprised. For better or worse. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And while you're down there doing all that, you might as well subscribe. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. Anyways guys, that's all from me. I'll see you next time. And remember... Oh no. Oh no, the storm's coming. 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 The storms are 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 coming. Lion, I was thinking, I shouldn't be mad at you. You were only doing what felt right, and for me to hold that against you wouldn't be fair. So, I forgive you. Well, gosh, Dorothy, well, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm glad we could put this behind us and be friends. Speaking of friends, I want to introduce you to my new friend, Dr. Newman. He's a dentist. A dentist? Remember, today's tears are tomorrow's punchlines. See ya!